keep me in, I kept my ropes. Now, to learn to do this, <coughs> you really need a Samson spot cord. You can get it over in Las Vegas, go on the internet, either for Mark Allen or Western Medicine Supplies, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And you get the rope, the same rope that Will Rogers liked to use, although he could spend about 40 different ropes. And they build about waist high. And you think your rope is being a wheel, a bicycle wheel. You have to have a spoke. And the spoke has to be half the length of the diameter of your rope. If not, it will wobble or lose it. And you should try to do it on a smooth floor piece of plywood. If it hits grass or anything like that, it'll just stop on you. And to learn, you put it like this. Eventually, you don't have to do this. And you just throw it out, and that's all you do. And the inertia keeps it going around. Now it will uh, kink up on you. It won't kink up on me because I'm spinning it with my fingers. And to learn learn how to do this, uh, just take a pencil when you're sitting watching television and keep twirling it. Eventually you learn how to do butterflies. That's where your loop goes back and forth, back and forth. You basically wind and unwind. It doesn't cost much for this rope. If you're going to get a kit, when I bought mine, it was $75 or I guess nowadays it would be about $100. It would be for uh, three different ropes. One that you can jump through, uh, one for doing body loop. That's about a 26-foot rope. And this, I would get two of these and also get you some burners. This is, a, a, the loop is called a Honda. And this is just a piece of leather, but it's got rawhide on it and it makes your rope go back and forth slowly. If you want to rope calves or cows, you would have a fast burner. Again, one more time, just uh, like this, let it rest. Don't send it out too far because it comes back to hit your leg, and then it won't work. And then uh, uh, you can pick something on the ground and just watch it. So once again, it's a lot of fun. Aerobics made easy. It also shows you some work, little practice is necessary. Now, I was a professional performer for many years. I want to get back into it. And one of the things I, one day I was performing at a men's um, hunting club, all men. And there's a big number of people there. And I finished my act and I tip my hat. I thought I was going to get off stage, but the manager came over to me and he says, I need you to buy me some time. The next performers were in a car accident, a fender bender. They'll be about 15 minutes late and I won't need you to talk to the people. Well, even though I like to talk, um, talk in front of a whole bunch of people is really frightening. And I said, well, talking is not my thing. He says, well, if you don't do it, paying you is not going to be my thing. So, uh, he says, say something profound, something that will get their attention. I looked out in the audience and I uh, remember Will Rogers, I read all of his books and I read uh, all of his speeches, one book on him and all of his speeches. So I looked at the people, my hands were sweating, my face was sweating a little bit now. Uh, and I said, I never met a man I didn't like. And boy, that resonated. I got a round of applause and three proposals. Well, I didn't dwell on too much. I'm not exactly politically correct, but it was appreciated. So I had to figure something else. So I started talking about my Uncle Ned. I made a few notes here on Uncle Ned, if you'll pardon me for grabbing these. Um, he was kind of a conservative. Well, I love the old boy. Um, he was cheap. In fact, how cheap? Well, you've all heard the story that uh, uh, a man could squeeze a nickel so hard that the buffalo would squeal. Well, Uncle Ned was so cheap that the buffalo wouldn't even get on the nickel. But he was always trying to uh, get ahead. He bought a book on getting ahead. He, he didn't believe in get-rich-quick schemes, but he did believe in trying to make money like lawyers and accountants did. And 
So he bought an inexpensive book on, uh, I think, Amazon or someplace. Uh, Books or I mean, it was called a accounting for the super stupid people. And he really liked that. He, he read the book uh, eleven t or tw well, thirteen times, uh, all eleven pages. I was counting the forward and the upward. And he did. He read all uh, the book uh, Cajun Not I think thirteen times. It took him about three months, but he got it read. And with that um, information, he was learning like. He liked the chapter on uh, tax, tax dodges that won't get you in jail. He liked that really good. And they were going down the road one day, him and Nellie. Now, uh, Aunt Nellie was also my favorite aunt. But if you looked in the dictionary or encyclopedia, you will see her picture under backseat drivers. I kid you not, a backseat driver. Now, Uncle Ned, uh, he was, uh, he always kept the metal, or the pedal right down to the floor, speeding, speeding. So they went to get in the truck, pickup truck, in 1951. It took them a couple minutes to get the chickens out of the front seat because the chickens, uh, the window wouldn't go close, the uh, handle, door handle broke. Now, Uncle Ned was going to get, uh, a new one, but he kept going to the swap meets because you could get things like that for 50 cent in those days, but they didn't have a 1951's Chevrolet, uh, so he drove with the wounded down. So once he got the chickens out, they're going down the road, and as I mentioned, Aunt Nellie was a backseat driver, and she would just, I, I remember one day uh, I was with them, and she says, Ned, the speed limit is 55 miles an hour. She was pretty emphatic on that. Well. Uncle Ned, uh, you know, he sped up. Ain't no, what in the land sake are you doing? And he said, well, um, he said the speed was 55. I was only doing 35 because I was trying to drive and study my manual and counting. And another time I remember uh, they were going down the road in winter time. No, actually it wasn't winter time. Uh, but she points out Ned, slow down. The sign says, bridges ice before the roads do. And so, you know, Rio yacked back at her. He says, it's August. And she looked at him and she was very serious. She says, well, I don't care what the date is. The sign man knows more about the weather than you do, than, than you do. So he, he thought about it and spit his tobacco out. He says, well, I guess the uh, weatherman knows more about signs than the sign man does. Going down, now, he had a good heart, even though he was to serve his money. They went into McDonald's. Uh, they were celebrating their 45th wedding anniversary, and that's where they decided to go out and spend a little extra money. But on the way in, there was a poor couple out there. Times were hard in those days. And husband and wife and two small children was a sign that says, please help, we're hungry. Really heart wrenching. <laughs> so Uncle Ned invited them in. And he, he, he ordered for them, he ordered a sausage uh, McMuffin, sausage McMuffin, so they were coming out in those days someplace. Well, then he called the man aside, he didn't want to embarrass him, he says, now women folks need protein. He said, I read that in a book, uh, uh, protein is good for women, so you and your, get your wife and your daughter, let them divide up the sausage and the egg, and you and your son can uh, divide up the two slices of bread. And the guy thanked him, and you know, and he got, at least he got a sandwich, and Uncle Ned felt good doing the Christian thing. And I'd like to talk about Uncle Ned a little bit more in the next one, so, as well, I'd like to share some more rope tricks with you. And eventually we'll get the guns out, and I'll show you a few gun tricks. And once the weather breaks and get outside, we'll show you some whip tricks. Maybe get Cheyenne to come up to the camera. She's not camera shy. And we'll get her to do a few tricks for you. So this is Cowboy Ron uh, coming to you with Happy Trails of the West. And see you next time. Thank you for your patience.